I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Don't forget to head on over to our website, shamelesssex.com, for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Shaman Sex Podcast, episode 150-something, 157, 158, one of the 50s. A lot. There's a lot of them. We've been doing this for a while now, and now we're coming at you hot two episodes a week. Woo! We kind of know what we're doing now. We kind of, sort of. I mean, but we're listening to a lot of Joe Rogan and his podcasts are like, they can be like three hours. It's like sometimes I I play them on YouTube and sometimes I'm like, oh my God, that podcast is still running because I I just, you know, get it involved in something, but I love him. Yeah. 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 And he can, he can definitely got, he has, and does he do two a week? How many does he do? He does two a week, I believe. Okay. And he's obviously going crazy right now because he is used to, uh, a lot of travel for being a comedian and his doing his stand up and stir crazy. Uh, yeah, but he's just he's just awesome. So anyway, I just wanted to shout out to Joe Rogan. Shout out to, to Joe Rose, totally <laughs> listening to Shameless Sex. <laughs> um, have you heard of the podcast Dying for Sex? You know, there's so many podcasts now that I am swimming in so many that I want to listen to. I've only listened to the first episode and a half, and uh, our mutual friend, uh, who's also my housemate, she she recommended it to me, and it's only I think there's only like seven or eight episodes, but the premise of it it's it's a storytelling podcast, right? So it's kind of like mm. you know this American Life kind of thing, and um, but this woman who has terminal cancer and is there like she's going to die soon and she she ends up leaving a marriage that isn't feeling good and isn't going well and having all these sexcapades and then they do a whole podcast about it and I think she does end up actually passing away at the end I haven't made it that far but um, really vulnerable really well done um, so if anyone's looking for like a different kind of podcast it's because different from ours we're more of a conversation interview educational podcast that one is like a story. I, yeah, it's really I adore storytelling folks that are good at storytelling it is an art form and yeah. I feel like I'm not great at telling stories because there is just this buildup of what details you should add and then what you kind of take away. And then you can't make it too long or too short. And you want people to really feel into the story and yeah. people that are good at telling stories. It's a remarkable gift. And it, I, I, I appreciate it. Well, and the podcast that we recorded, we've been recording a lot of fucking awesome podcasts, by the way. So many of them. We recorded the one with the phone sex operator that it isn't online yet, but, and, and part of what she is, she's in a phenomenal storyteller. Oh my God. She yeah. really is. Yeah. yeah. That was, that's such a, we were cracking. That was such a good episode. Um, and this episode I'm really excited about. We, uh, this person, Matthew Aris, who is doing this episode on masculine sexual mastery and multiple orgasms, um, mostly speaking uh, to and about penis owning folks um, and he's really insightful um, I, we you know we do have a lot of um, guest speakers who identify as female here so it's nice to have someone who identifies as um, a cis man here to share more of his perspective for other penis owning folks as well um, and so yeah we I, and I both learned a lot about this and I think the multi-orgasmic part also applies to all folks whether, regardless of what your genitals look like um, so there's a lot of really insightful information here yeah uh, and yeah, excited to share I think that. It's good sometimes just to get your mind off of. We're bombarded right now with so much information about coronavirus and stats, and yeah. yeah, and it's good to just tap into other aspects of existing on this planet. And tapping into your sexuality is really important. And I know some folks are stressed out or they're scared about making money and the economy flattening. And I think it's sometimes, yes, all of that stuff is out there, but let's also just take some time and, and do some other work and help improve other aspects of our lives. And sexuality is one of them. More joy, I, more pleasure. More joy. Yeah. Which brings me to a sex question. Amy, are you ready for a sex question? Yeah. And I just want to say a little blip right now. Every Friday 
on Instagram, at least during quarantine. I don't know if we'll do this forever. Uh, Amy and I are going live on Instagram. We are giving away, we're trying to give away free products. We gave away actually 200 total hot octopus sex toys. We gave away 25 bottles of Uber Lube. This week, we're hoping to give away a bunch of OMGS access. So tune in. 12 p.m. Pacific time on Instagram. Check us out. If we don't answer your sex question online, there is a chance we will answer it there. And I say there's a chance because we get so many that it's not guaranteed, but we still love you and we appreciate you asking. So here is a sex question from an anonymous listener. So me, F23, and my boyfriend, M24, have been dating for 2.5 years now. We're very happy together and have a great relationship overall. However, we have differing levels of sex drives. Mine is very high and his is very low. After having some hurt feelings and arguments over this, we decided to open up our relationship. This was all pre-virus. And of course, we're putting it on hold till all of this is over. Now I feel like I should have be now I feel like I should be the only one allowed to sleep with other people. But he says that's unfair. And if I get to, then he should as well. I know that might sound selfish of me, but here is why I have this argument. I would rather just have sex with him only. So why should he be allowed to have sex with other women when he doesn't even feel like having sex with me? And when we do have sex, it's pretty good for both of us. So that's not the issue. He believes he should have the opportunity if I have it, but I don't think it's fair. Ladies, please give me your opinion on this matter so we can hopefully put this argument to bed. Thank you. So basically, they're saying, she's saying that he, he wants to have sex and they are opening their relationship up, but she's kind of bummed because he doesn't really have sex with her. So I get it. Why should he be able to have sex outside of the relationship when perhaps he's not even engaging with her? Mm -hmm. What do you think, Amy? Yeah, I, there's a couple of things that come to mind. So it sounds like she's essentially saying uh, they're different, differing levels of desire. She wants more sex. So there's a level of her not feeling met, having her needs met, which is totally normal in relationships where people show up with differing levels of desire. This happens all the time, especially in long-term relationships. Um, and, and so in April, and we talk about this all the time that, you know, it's always a negotiation and it's an, it's an ongoing conversation because things change over time. Um, you know, what are your needs? What are mine? And how do we meet each other? And sometimes you can't, sometimes someone's like, you know, I only want to have sex once every two weeks. And someone's like, okay, I want to have sex like five times a week. And you can still somewhat meet in the middle, but you might not be able to to fully be in the middle there somewhere. Um, and that's when people start to negotiate things. Okay. Can I have sex with other people or, you know, what are, or sex workers or what are my options here? Um, and so they started that process here. And my first questions are, um, there's a kind of like a tit for tat thing going on, right? Like, okay, if you get this and I get this too. And um, even though it seems like we're creating this because you have more of a need actually that I'm not, either not willing to or available to, to meet. Um, so we're creating this so that you can get your needs met here. And, but because you're getting that, then I feel like I need to be a completely equal with you to keep things feeling fair. I'm like not a huge fan of just doing things so they feel fair. I'm not a huge fan of doing things for tit for tat because you should or su are supposed to do that. Um, and my question I, to me, as I read this, I just feel like there's other stuff going on. Like I, 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 I think that I'm, I'm curious if he's saying that it just seems like a fairness thing for him and that, that, and it's, and you're saying, you know, it's not that the sex between you isn't great, but it's really just like you want more and you would just totally have all of it with him, but he, it's just not available there. And um, I'm curious it, for him, you know, my questions for him would be more like, what is this fairness going to do for you? And why do you feel like you need it to be this equal playing field when, um, like what, what is the intention behind that? I'm a little more curious about that. Um, as opposed to saying like, yeah, I can't, I don't, I'm not really, I don't have the perfect answer for like, if something's right or wrong, because that's, this is different for every, everyone in terms of what you need, but I'm just seeing her needs and desires um, and that he's not willing to or cannot meet them. And they found a way to open that up, but, and he feels like it needs to be completely equal for him to feel what special, important, cared for, um, valid, 
I'm just wondering what that's, that inner process is all about. Because if it really is just about sex and someone getting their needs met, um, or also my other question is, is he opening that up because he really wants to? Is there also a part where he's doing that to appease you and deep down it doesn't fully feel good for him to like, just see, I don't know. My, there's more going on, my guess is. Um, uh, and I'm just curious what that looks like. Do you have, what about you, Chip? What do you think? I, you know, what came up for me as I was reading this question is that I think obviously both of these folks need to do some work within themselves, right? And I think that it's important, meaning perhaps tap into your desires and express them to each other a little bit more if you haven't explored that, meaning maybe that they could listen to this, the the him in this relationship could listen to this podcast and actually Matthew Aris, who is an amazing guide for sexuality, for sacred sexuality, specifically working with men, perhaps he could start to tap into some of his sexual desires and maybe express those more deeply to her. And perhaps there is something going on to lower his libido uh, behind the scenes. Maybe there's, there could be medication or stress, or there could be something that's affecting him in a, in a, in a way that is lowering his sex drive. I don't know. Obviously, like Amy said, there's probably more to the story. It just seems like the work that's that would need to be done can be done as individuals. And then you could come together and maybe talk more in depthly about your desires because and you could turn it into a playful thing. It doesn't have to be this serious, like uh, my desire is to have, you know, this all the time. You could make it this fun, playful game. Like, Hey, I learned about Jaya's erotic blueprint and I know what I am. Did you take this quiz and uh, find out what you are? And then Perhaps you could do something. That's what I mean about the work, right? To tap into what the erotic nature that each of you are looking for as individuals in the relationship, what those are, and then turn those into playful, fun ways. Or you've talked about uh, before, Amy, also talking about your core erotic theme, identifying what your spank bank material is. Maybe have a sexy date night where you write those out on cards, write it some kind of fun game where you have that spank bank material. If you don't feel comfortable talking about it, where each of you could read each other's sexy, fun spank bank, what you, what you think about. And if that's too much for you, then maybe you could do something else where you have a clip from your porn maybe that you're watching or some hot movie that got you a little tingly that you've whether it was fatal attraction in 1980 or pretty woman with her boots taking out the condoms whatever or maybe it's something more current uh that could also be a good way if porn's not your game uh so i think that there are yes there's more underlying things happening here mm-hmm. however if if you don't either, neither of you feel that way, or you feel like you've been putting in work and there's hurt. I like the no tit for tat. I think tit for tat is a dangerous thing to, to play with each other. It's like, well, you did that. I'm going to do it now. That's not really productive. And that's probably going to end in more hurt and pain and perhaps something even uh, less desirable, which could be a breakup or a jealousy or, so I think uh, more information from each other a little bit more work and maybe tapping into some of the tools that are out there, uh, each of you tapping into those, not just one of you. Uh, Both of you have to be on board to get things in the right direction. That's my, that's what I think. I think on the, yeah, on the note of more information, again, I'm still unclear to at first, like if he's saying, I don't really have a high sex drive and I don't want to have sex with you a ton, but I do want to have the ability to have sex with other people. If you do, there's something that still actually doesn't quite add up as well. Um, and, and, and maybe it just really is like, well, yeah, I don't have a high sex drive in this long-term relationship with you. Cause we've been having sex for a long time. And there is something that sounds exciting about having sex with other people that kind of does turn me on. And like, that might be the answer. And like, there's not, that's actually uh, okay. It doesn't mean that everyone's going to feel comfortable with that. Or that's going to feel great. But, um, so again, there's like a deeper understanding of what that is. And then my, in his defense, I will say, yeah, sometimes it, it does feel like, well, if you get to go and do these things, I want want to do that too because then that can create a sense of like fairness and more security maybe uh, more respect or something like that and I want to say that 
that that can be an okay. That's there's nothing wrong with having that need to. It's just having a deeper of understanding where these desires come from and what the intention is and what the ultimate outcome is. I'm also curious who actually just who who said they want to open up the relationship first. That's not clear in here. They both decided that. Um, so I'm, yeah, more information, more discovery, and it's the perfect time to yeah. do all that, right? Yeah. The, the discovery because every, I think they're together. It sounds like they're together, yeah, uh, in this quarantine or shelter in place. So it could be the time to sort of explore and and setting and making time and setting aside a time for that is really important. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that question, though. I th- yeah, that that was really great. Totally. Yeah. And less shoulds and supposed tos. So like in her here, she did also state, um, he, I feel like it should be the certain way. And there's, again, there's something there too, where they get away from what should happen. Um, and more so like what's really true for you all. What are the feelings behind it? Okay. Let's do a bio and dive on in because it's an awesome episode. All right, so Matthew Aris is a sacred sexuality guide, a shamanic somatic healer, a transformational life coach, and conscious content creator. He facilitates immersive experiences, men's retreats, tantra and transformational festivals, men's circles, and group coaching programs across the world. Although a lot of the in-person stuff is on hold, he has a lot online, including a new program that's coming out, I believe, in May. To learn more, visit themasculinepillar.com. Pillar is P-I-L-L-A-R. And are you ready to dive into the podcast, Chip? Oh, yeah. All right. But first... You all know how particular we are about our sponsors, and we think you deserve to know what you're putting into your bodies. This is why we choose Ritual. Ritual makes vitamins that use high quality ingredients, and they actually tell you where they source these from. Not only did they choose the most essential ingredients we need from our vitamins, but they did all the obsessive research for you so that you can feel good that you're putting only the best in your body. We love supporting great companies who make awesome products and Ritual takes the cake for vitamins. They use microalgae instead of fish oil, which is so much better for the environment. And women who take Ritual show an increase in levels of vitamin D. And come on, Amy, you know we all need more vitamin D. So you all know that making small daily changes can lead to big results. So why not start with something as easy as your vitamins? Ritual is offering shameless sex listeners 10% off your first three months. Just go to ritual.com slash shameless sex to start your ritual today. Again, that's 10% off your first three months. Just go to ritual.com slash shameless sex. And let's get back to the show. All right, everyone. It is episode time once again on the Shameless Sex Podcast. You already heard in our bio who we are talking to and what we are talking about. And we are very excited about this topic. Everyone loves sexual mastery in this particular topic. We're talking about masculine sexual mastery and emotional mastery. We'll find out what that means. Welcome, Matthew, to the show. And we would like to start with the question that we ask all of our guests what brought you to where you are today? How did you get into this work in sexual mastery, the masculine, sexuality, relationships, et cetera? Oh, man. Um, I will synthesize it because it's a journey that, that I've shared a lot. Um, I, at the age of five, I learned how to work with energy. My Nana, who is now a a really beautiful 92-year-old sage, powerful healer and and energy wizard in and of itself, um, was teaching me how to channel the energy of of the sun, of the cosmos through my being to heal. This is at five. And I started working with this and healing family members and working with energy. And around 11 or 12, I found spellcasting. And I would sit in my basement in candlelight in the dark and cast spells and practice manifestation and witchcraft and different, you know, intention setting. And then around 16, I found sex and women. And I didn't see how the two related. Now I see it so clearly. But back then, I didn't see how the two related. Being bullied, being teased, not fitting in in school, I just shut all of that out. And... I found safety in relationship. I found safety in dating people and being friends with their friends. And that built this unhealthy relationship within sexuality of myself. And this went on all through high school into college and then ended up marrying um, 
high school girlfriend at the age of 25. And that was a six year marriage. And of that, a large part of that, I was having an affair. And I was so disconnected from myself, from my sexuality, from my desires, from how I wanted to be in the world, that I was completely shut down emotionally. And I got to the point where I left all of it. I left my career, I left the marriage, I left the affair and just went into a deep study within myself. And on that process, I came into a really powerful spiritual awakening and decided that I only wanted to firstly create content that could affect change on the planet and deeply understand all of the beliefs, all of the shadow, all of the wounding that had been projected onto myself from a young age. So it just kind of showed up as a result of, of the shadow that, that, you know, was around and and present for a, a lot of my life. And it's a big part of my work now is, is supporting men and understanding, you know, the, the wounding, the conditioning, the beliefs that we were raised with that led to these unhealthy behaviors that allowed us to, to seek attention, to seek validation in, in particular ways. Mm-hmm. Are you still casting spells? I love that. <laughs> oh yeah. Now it's, now it's like sex magic rituals and, and intention settings. I have, I have like stacks of Oracle cards and tarot cards behind the computer right now. I'm in my my temple space. I love it. Pixar just came out with a new movie, Onward. It's all about wizardry. And uh-huh. I watched it the other day. Obviously, I'm at home more often now. And I was like, this is amazing. They're casting spells. And you got to check it out since you're, I mean, you're on lockdown in Austin as well. Uh, but that is not what we. I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> uh, I have a question about what exactly... What does it mean when a man, a penis-owning human, is in his sexual power? Um, Our sexual energy is our creative energy. It's our ability to create anything in the world. And and men and the masculine energy particularly is purpose-driven in its innate energetic of it. And when we're able to harness our our sexual energy, harness our creative energy, we're able to create anything. The masculine wants a purpose, the masculine needs a purpose to be able to penetrate the world, to be able to to be in his mission, to be able to to create that which which will, you know, create change in alignment with, with our life. So I believe at the rudimentary level, our our purpose as humans is you know following natural law. We are here to give life at the base level of it. When you look at nature, whether it is uh, trees or an animal, you are born, you mature, you give life, you raise life, and you die. At the end of the day, we come, all of us come from sexual energy. We come from that potential energy in the act of, of sexuality, whether that is conscious or unconscious. And when we learn to cultivate that energy, when we learn to work with that energy and not create a life, speaking of spell casting and not create a life, you have the ability to create anything you, you could ever imagine by tapping into the potential energy within that. So for a man who is particularly masculine oriented, our ability to cultivate our sexual energy is our ability to, to harness in on our purpose and create the most powerful impact on the planet and you look at it in the world right now uh, the 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 chaos that is going on is a result of of unhealthy sexual energy at the core of it the 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 uh possession the the slavery the power the control the tyrancy all of that is is a a need for power for power and control and not actually cultivating the creativity that lives within us so it's it's kind of spraying all over the place and when we can pull it in, which is what we're doing right now on a, a, a collective consciousness, when we can pull that in, cultivate it and sublimate it and actually work with that energy, then as a man, you can focus it like an arrow and just direct it. So your mission is to help men to, um, to, to be their, their kind of their, their best selves is this, this mastery mission, but ultimately it's actually for the greater good of everything and everyone in the earth. It sounds like entirely you, mm. you heal the masculine within ourselves and you heal the planet mm. at, at the end of the day, right now, our ability to cultivate energy right now and step into the greatest alignment, the greatest embodiment and the greatest integrity 
is what will heal the planet. Mm-hmm. Not shifting anything on a larger scale, but shifting the individual. Recognizing where man, woman, gender neutral, it doesn't matter. We all have masculine energy. We all have feminine energy. And healing the masculine energy within us, because the masculine energy in the world right now is what has created so much wounding. I avoid terms like like toxic. I, I think that just toxic in general it, it applies to um, a really unhealthy association of masculinity in and of itself. But the wounded masculine, the wounded masculine that has has um, blanketed the the collective consciousness right now across the the planet. So when men, particularly who were told from a young age to man up to not be such a girl, to don't cry like a little pussy, to you know, toughen up, whatever it is, all of these things that made us suppress our emotions, that made us confused about what it actually meant to be a man in the world. And through that confusion, they look to things like mainstream media or, or their, their mentors, their father figures, their teachers, whatever it was that was displaying an, uh, a wounded projection of masculinity in it itself, that continued to perpetuate the cycle. So by men doing the work right now and deeply understanding our energy, understanding our beliefs, understanding our masculinity, understanding our sexuality, and coming into the full embodiment of that, wholly heals the planet. And that brings me to my next question, which you've kind of said is part of the work is understanding all these parts of themselves. So how, how does one heal the masculine as part of the mission to master um, their sexual energy, become the master of their sexual energy? Yeah. So um, I have, I have a program right now that I'm running called the pillar and I'm, I'm, currently taking applications for the next round. And in this, the literally the first week of it starts with this question. It starts with the question of what does it mean to be a man in the world today? Something that, that came through in meditation when I was originally creating this program is how do we understand masculinity in a feminine world? Because the world is deeply feminine in its, in its um, creation. Like everything that we see in existence, nature is, is feminine in, in, in nature, the, the beauty, the, the, the musing, the, the creativity. So how do we understand masculinity within that in a healthy way? And as men on an individual level, it starts by actually looking at, at the initial imprinting that we receive. You know, I mentioned initially, most men that are listening to this at some point in their life Something happened to them, I'm sure. We can all relate to this. I have men from all over the world in my program right now, and they've all had the same thing. Something happened, and somebody that they looked up to told them to man up. Somebody told them that it wasn't safe to express themselves the way they were, generally within an emotional sense. So if I'm a five-year-old on the playground, and I'm being bullied or teased or I'm just sad, I'm crying and a teacher tells me to man up. Now as this young child, I'm saying, okay, well, if, if I'm supposed to man up, then crying means that I'm not a man. So what does it mean to be a man? So we look to, and as a child of the, the, the 90s, 80s and 90s, you know, we look to popular media. We look to magazines. We look to you know, people that are, are showing us these examples of what it means to be a man. And they are projected through this wounded lens of, of manhood, of, of masculinity. And when we start to recognize the, the beliefs that we hold on an individual level, the belief that it's not safe to cry if I'm a man, the belief that if, if I'm a man, I need to show up this way. Most of us were told or shown that in order to be a man, you either fought somebody or you fucked somebody. Those were the representations that we were given of what it meant to be a man. So most boys, most teenagers, most men said, great, I'm going to be a man. I'm going to show you how tough I am. I'm going to show you how many people I can fuck. And and that created this distorted lens of, of masculinity, this distorted lens of what it actually meant to be a man in the world today. So to, to heal it, we start by by going back to the beliefs by every single person that I work with, whether it's one-on-one or in the program or what I share, going down to the, the core belief beneath it all and allowing yourself to feel safe within that. Mm-hmm. 
and then reprogram from there. Understand your shadow, understand the parts of yourself that were acting out, understand why in the first place. That's always I, something that, oh, sorry, Amy, uh, that always comes up for me when uh, I am either a friend with someone or my brother, they apologize when they get teary eyed or they cry. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want you to see me like this. And that's, you're in this vulnerable space. And it is true. I, you know, and I carry a lot of masculine energy within myself. Uh, I do my best to, to call on my feminine, but I have this really masculine way. And I am the same way about, about crying. And it was probably the way we were brought up. And it doesn't mean anything that you're less of a human. You're just t- tapping into these things. And that carries over, in, in my opinion, and I'll say, and I'll ask you if you agree with this, Matthew, that carries over though with being vulnerable and being in this, um, this open space within your sexuality when you're intimate with someone and, and being able to open your heart and actually share more of what's in there, uh, at least for me, when, when I've tried to tap deeper into my, uh, my emotions and actually let the feels happen, let the cries out, it really does open me up and it, it kind of carries over into all other facets of my life, including my pleasure. And which brings me to my, my question or actually um, maybe some, some tips that you could provide our listeners out there, tips for cultivating more orgasms and pleasure uh, for the men and, um, and their partners. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Um, tips for cultivating more pleasure and, and orgasms for, for men and their partners. Um, so like I said, the, the potential energy, I'm, I'm a healer at, at my, my core. Like I said, I I started healing when I was at the age of five and I view the world on an energetic level. I see the world as vibrational frequency and everything has its own signature, its own energetic signature. Sexual energy holds a very particular like energetic, but sexual energy and creative energy, it's the same frequency channel. It's how we're associating it, how the, the, the meaning that we give it. So when we learn to harness that and cultivate that, and there's practice, there's those techniques, there's um, different studies of, of Tantra or Taoism or, or different breath works or just visualizations that allow for this to happen, we can begin to increase our pleasure by, by honing in on just the energetic that lives within that. And what I mean by that is for men, most men have a belief that there is only one type of orgasm for them. They generally believe that women can have different types of orgasms, whether they've experienced it or not. Most men believe that when you're building to a climax, when you're building to an orgasm, you're building, you're building, you're building, you're seven, eight, nine, ten, you erupt, you ejaculate, that is your orgasm, it's amazing, and then you're done, you're tired, you're out, fall asleep, go and get a snack, Mm -hmm. go to bed, shower, whatever. And... That is a myth of male sexuality. When you're able to build that energy within yourself, you can cultivate an orgasm that does not ejaculate. You can cultivate multi-orgasmicness as men to be able to to either last longer, to increase your, your orgasmicness, to orgasm without touch, literally just through energetic breath and moving the energy. And our ability to tune into the energetic within our sexuality is how we cultivate that. And something I like to talk about in my program, and and there's literally two weeks that are dedicated, actually more than that, but two weeks specifically dedicated to sublimating and and non-ejaculatory orgasms and energetic orgasms, is a lot of men have experienced at some point or another in their life ejaculation without the full climax orgasm. Like they're building, they're building, they're with their partner, they're masturbating, whatever it is. And then they're like, oh, I don't want to go yet. Like I'm trying to stop. And they try to stop and they ejaculate, but they don't actually feel the orgasm. And I like to talk about this because that is the perfect example of the opposite side of this. If you can ejaculate and not feel the orgasm, then why can't you have an orgasm without ejaculating? And through different practices, through different techniques, through different... um, 
literally mastery, mastery of your own energy, you can cultivate that. And then you bring it into relationship, whether you're in relationship with a man, a woman, multiple partners, whatever it is, you bring that in. And through your ability to move that energy, through your ability to be in in sacred union within yourself and within your pleasure, as the man, as the masculine, you get to hold the container for that sacred union with your partner. So if you're in a traditional heterosexual relationship and you're with your, your female partner, you get to hold that container. You get to actually guide the breath. You get to say, hey, listen, like follow me, follow my breath, follow the energy, visualize it, connect third eye to third eye, visualize the energy moving from, from my sacral, from my cock into your yoni, up into your solar plex, into your heart, into your throat, third eye, crown, crown, and like guide it literally guide it with your partner and move this energy. If it's nothing more than just the words that you're saying, your awareness is still going there, whether you feel it or not. Where your attention goes, energy flows. So whether you are attuned enough that you can actually feel it in your solar plex, in your heart, in your third eye, in your crown, or you're just saying it and you are visualizing it, that's still working it. That's still cultivating it. Mm -hmm. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast is made possible by OMGS.com. OMGS is a research-based online program that teaches you all about how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made tasteful and inspiring short videos to show you techniques on how to pleasure yourself or another vulva. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and has changed their lives. So for all you vulva owners or vulva lovers out there who may already be having good orgasms and you want to take it to the next level, or perhaps you want to explore more variety in your playtime, OMGS will have something just for you. With two seasons, one all about internal and the other all about external techniques, it's better than any book or DVD money can buy. To learn more, visit omgs.com backslash shameless. Our listeners get $5 off. Check it out. This podcast was also made possible by Uber Lube. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant great for all kinds of sex. It's less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes. And there are hundreds of doctors who recommend Uber Lube to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks who are experiencing dryness. You never knew lube could be this good. So whether you're an avid lube lover or you've never used lube before, Uber Lube is right for you. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on the body. Uber Lube has endless uses. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth right before an oral sex session, and it totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's gorgeous. It's totally discreet and looks more like a beautiful cosmetic product, so you can even leave it on your nightstand shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com. Use code SHAMELESSSEX and you get 10% off and free shipping. That's uberlube.com. Go check it out. And now back to the show. I love that. And I think for some folks who aren't familiar with, you know, third eye, crown, chakra, you know, a lot of these, these concepts, I think you can, I mean, you can say, you can call it so many different things, right? But they're just they're locations in your body and they're, and we're, we're all energetic beings and, and um, it, it, whether we want to admit that or, or not. So I think some of, our, some of our listeners are get a little confused when we use more wooey language. Just when I invite our listeners, if they're not um, able to connect that, just to know that, that you're talking about different areas of the body. And I have, I personally have experienced that in myself by, um, by, shifting my attention to where I'm moving my energy and also use it, utilizing the breath with the longer, slower, deeper breath. I, that I can feel the sexual energy moving through my body as opposed to just staying in one location. Um, and I felt that with partners, I've had partners feel that too, when they're able to really, really focus in on that. Um, so, so what I'm hearing from you then, I know that this, you have a whole two weeks on it, so we can't talk all about all the techniques and things like that, but breath sounds like a huge part of it, visualization and attention of where you're putting your energy. A lot of folks are just in their monkey minds during sex and not really fully present. So I'm sure you're teaching a lot of skills in um, being present and really feeling in their body and how to channel that energy. Yeah, entirely. And and even just if if for a minute, if I can just guide something to to the two of you and your listeners, mm-hmm. if you if you close your eyes for a minute and just sit where you're sitting, whether you're in your car or on a couch or on the floor, just 
close your eyes and take a deep breath and ground yourself. And what I want you to do, whether you are a man or a woman, is clench your, your genitals. Clench as if you're stopping yourself from peeing. Clench your perineum. Clench, like if you're peeing, you're in the middle of a flow and you stop it, clench that. That feeling right there. So now that you have an association of that, now that you can, you can kinesthetically feel it in your body, I want you to visualize just your awareness, that's all, in that area where you feel that clench. And we're going to inhale and clench and then exhale release. So inhale and clench. Exhale release. Inhale and clench. Exhale, release. Now, what I want to incorporate here is as I say inhale and you breathe in slowly, just visualizing, nothing more, and you might feel it. Visualize as you clench and you feel that clench in your genitals. Visualize with your breath that energy, just your awareness, moving up your chest and into the the center of your forehead, what I will refer to as your third eye, but into the center of your forehead. As you inhale, pull it up there. And as you exhale, visualize it going back down like a waterfall back into your genitals. So again, inhale, clench. Exhale, release. Inhale, clench and pull up. Exhale, release. And this is a a practice that you can do, whether you are a man or a woman, to begin to move that energy, to literally cultivate that energy within yourself. And if you are in partnership or not, this is a beautiful exercise to incorporate into self-pleasure. If you are in a a self-pleasure practice, This is what I call a masturbation ritual. But if you're in a self-pleasure practice, literally just focus your breath with that clench. And what you're going to do is you're going to start to to essentially stoke the fire. It's like taking like the bellows of an old fire and you're just blowing on it. And you're going to make that fire hotter. And the more you do it, you can begin to increase that breath and move it. You can... I would love for the listeners that are, are dedicated to this, if you want to actually just commit to a, a time frame of this, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, women will find it easier than men, but men can do this too. And you focus on this with no touch. You can do this closed. You can cultivate a full energetic orgasm where your body is in convulsions at the end of it, feeling like an orgasm because you're building that energy and you're moving it. Just play with it. Like, get faster and slower and faster and slower and see how it cultivates. And by doing that, you increase not only your, your sexual energy, but you also increase your, your creative energy. You then take that and you go and you paint or, or write or draw or photograph or move or dance. You Mm -hmm. use that energy for, for creative expression. I, feel so good every time I pulsate my genitals. So I just got to (laughs) say, if anything, it's just going to feel good, but there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more of wonderful offerings there. And so whether someone is a vulva or a penis or some in-betweens, they can use this same technique, correct? Fully. Yeah, fully. And and if you're in partnership, if you're a man uh, in in partnership, this is, you know, part of what I, I guide for men in, in understanding their masculinity, understanding their masculine energy, you get to create the container for that. Mm. And what I mean by that is if we think of the masculine as an energetic is kind of like the banks of a river. Like we create the structure that houses the, the water to flow, the water being the feminine, the, the feminine fluidity, the motion, the movement, But that water can't flow without being held. So the banks, that masculine gets to hold the expression for that. So as a man in partnership, you can create a a container. You can create a, a ritual with your partner. You can sit in front of one another. 
you can sit in in a, a pose called yab yum. So essentially, the man is sitting um, cross legged, and the woman is sitting on top of his lap with her legs behind him, and they're you know chest to chest, holding one another, and guide this breath, like guide it for the two of you, guide it with with both of you moving that energy and build the energy together. In sacred union, you guys will build to some of the most profound, amazing pleasurable orgasms of your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've mentioned the pillar, which uh, I checked out your site. It's beautiful site, the masculine pillar.com. It will be in the show notes. And uh, I just would love for you to, to give our listeners out there an idea of what the pillar is, um, how they can actually sign up for that. And or maybe just a little bit about what they're getting into and, and what they could expect. Of course. Um, so the pillar is uh, the pillar of masculine, sexual, and emotional mastery. It is my three month online group coaching program for men. This is designed and created to give men the greatest accountability, support, and tools to amplify and accelerate their sex life, their relationships, their masculine energy, their creative energy, to allow them to come into the fullest expression of of their essence, of who they be, who they are in the world, in a very tight, closed container. So over the course of three months, I guided a group of men I'm, I'm currently in the, the first one. We're in week eight, and I am taking applications right now for the second one, um, where I guide men through understanding the, the beliefs that we held, understanding the shadows, understanding masculinity and what it meant to be a man. I support in really understanding what are the authentic desires that we hold in, in everything? What are the authentic desires that we hold in relationship? What are the authentic desires that we hold in sexual experiences? If you're in a traditionally monogamous relationship and you want to have a threesome with another woman, if that is an authentic desire, how do you have that conversation? What fears are standing in the way of that? So really stepping into your fullest power, your fullest expression, creating these containers, creating the ability to anchor into your purpose, anchor into your your masculinity, looking at your your energy, looking at self-pleasure. As men, we generally, our our original imprinting of self-pleasure was in the dark at nighttime with the room closed and a tube sock. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's, it's funny, but it's true. Like for most of us, there was a lot of shame. It was hidden. You know, our, our pleasure was not safe. That was the belief that we held. And even now, whether you are in a, a, a conscious relationship that talks openly about sexuality or you are in a relationship that you don't really talk about sexuality, but you have sex often, most men don't talk about being in their self-pleasure, don't talk about masturbating. My partner and I will, will say to each other, they, like we will set times throughout the week where I'll say, Hey, you know, for these two hours, I'm going to go have a bath and I'm going to go into a self-pleasure ritual. Can you like give me some space? Or she will like, she's putting on a similar program for women. She'll be in, you know, her, her masculine energy, creating this, this program in like doing and, and we'll like take a break. She's like, I'm going to go take a self-pleasure break and, and go because cultivating that energy for ourselves, it's not taking energy away from the union. It's actually pouring more energy into the union. And when we create a healthy relationship with our pleasure, when we create a healthy relationship with, with our, our yoni, with our lingam, with our cock, with our vagina, like whatever you know, rings true for you, when we create that healthy relationship with it, it pours into everything in our life. Your, your second, or the, the launch of your next round is during Masturbation May, one of our favorite months, everyone. Um, so, which I just was reminded of that. We love celebrating Masturbation May. And last uh, Masturbation May, we did a 30-day challenge with our listeners where we challenged them to do 10 minutes a day minimum of self-pleasure with full intention and presence, no, you know, no porn, no distractions just for them and honoring their body. And some people are like, that's it's super easy. And some people are like, that's really hard. And a lot of folks got a lot out of it. Um, but I love that. I love that you and your partner have that 
kind of set in place where you, it's, it's okay. You're not only just okay for you, you know, there's permission, but also like it's an important practice that you're realizing. Celebrated. And people often often put so much focus on their partner to meet all of their needs and they don't ask for that or create that own space for themselves to have that or to yeah, celebrate that in the other person. I think that that's really, really, really valuable for all folks. Um, one other thing I was reminded of, I've been in a, and I'm sure this, I'll ask you this question, I guess, if this does apply to your um, men's retreats and the work that you do. I think what comes also with, with the idea of being a man is that they can't be super uh, emotionally and physically close to other men in ways that are like maybe snuggly and lovey. And I've been in some tantric environments where um, where I saw this beautiful invitation that happened th- through really wonderful containers where men were, you know, in big cuddle puddles with each other and allowing their hands to just like, you know, essentially touch over the other man's skin on his arm and to, or like holding each other, just like rubbing their head. And these things where they're like, holy shit, I didn't know, one, that I could do this. Two, that just because I'm touching doesn't have to scream sex. Three, that it's so nourishing. So are you seeing this too, that there's becomes like this invitation for men to experience closeness with other men um, in a way that they're, they're not usually conditioned to experience? Entirely. And, and um, intimacy doesn't have to be sexual. I think that there's a lot of men that are comfortable with um, you know, intimacy, but aren't necessarily, there's still a lot of beliefs and that's totally okay that they're they're not comfortable cuddling with another man or holding another man. But like the, our ability to like, firstly, just talk with other men about our emotions, talk with other men about what's going on in our life is one of the most healing things that we can do. It is one of the oldest forms of ritual in our DNA. Men have been gathering around a fire in sacred circle since the dawn of time. And they have shared, they have shared food, they have shared wisdom, they have shared stories, they have shared, they've supported one another in tribes and in communities. And then we lost that because that wasn't safe. And our ability to come back into that sacred space. I have facilitated men's circles all over the globe. I have done these in men's retreats with a few hundred people. I've done these in my living room in Los Angeles with five people all over the planet. I have circled men up to talk about what is present for us. And that is essentially what I have created with this program. At the end of the day, I'm creating a sacred circle of brothers to be able to talk about their emotions, talk about their feelings. And for some, that looks like saying, you know, I, I'm also attracted to men and I want to cuddle with other men for others. That looks like just saying, Hey, I, I have a hard time like getting erect right now and telling other men that like to be able to say that without the the stigma, without the shame. And, and you mentioned masturbation may one of the exercises that I gave the men in the program was a a week of self pleasure. Mm -hmm. And they were to set a, a a container set a time frame to be in their pleasure to be in connection with their cock with their lingam and anytime a fantasy anytime a thought of another person anytime the desire to reach for porn or or social media or whatever as a, a stimulus showed up stop come back into literally just the sensation just the, the feeling and the majority of them the first few times had a really, really challenging time actually getting an erection, actually building their energy because there's so much association with our pleasure that we put onto other people. There's so much association on, I need this visual stimulation to tell me that I'm excited as opposed to this, like actually just feels really good in my body right now. And I'm going to be with this energy. One thing, and I know we have to wrap up, which I, that keeps coming up for me is, and it, it is relevant. I think almost having fathers out there that, yes, are parents to sons, breaking the cycle of, of toughen up, little man, or, you know, you don't be a little bitch. How about instilling some, some more love and, and instead having it be okay to 
to cry. I don't know. I'm sorry to bring up another movie. I don't know why, but this came up for me when Amy was talking about the kind of the cuddle puddle with men. That movie, and I don't, I don't know if either of you have seen it. I don't know. I've been watching a lot of movies in the last while, but it's with Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. It's like Daddy's Home 2. I know, uh-huh. Daddy's Home. It's it's really hilarious, but Will Farrow is the stepdad and his, they go and pick their parents up and Mark Wahlberg is like this tough, st- the tough, like actual dad to these kids. And they go to pick up their dads at the airport and Will Farrow's dad comes out and they kiss and they hug like, I love you, dad. And then, you know, Mark Wahlberg's this big tough dude and his dad comes out and he's, I think it's like Mel Gibson and he's like this badass. He's like, what's up? And they like, are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're both like ride off on motorcycles. And that was a perfect example of, I mean, it has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it came up for me and I was like, what is that movie? Because you kind of get cringy in the movie seeing Will Ferrell's relationship with his dad, but it's like they kiss on the mouth and they like hug and they're like, oh, son, I love you. And then the other, you know, kind of typical, typical uh, father-son relationship that we're used to traditionally is this more tough and rough and, and arm wrestling and, you know, being a badass. And I love the fact that you can be in your masculine and you can be in touch with this. You can have emotional intelligence and and do all this, uh, the, these, the, the self pleasuring uh, rituals, and you can still be a, a masculine man, and you don't, or a masculine human. Let me just say. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to share that. And now I, I really think that you all should just watch Daddy's Home too. Okay. <laughs> And report back to me and We're let me know what you think. Daddy's home too. Yeah. Well, and I one thing that I've thought of when, as you were saying that April is like some people might be like, well, okay, but why? You know what? What? What do I get out of that if I'm all of a sudden now able to be closer to other men, whether it's my dad or my brother or a friend, where we can actually like hug and embrace? And what I see with the the I have, I have a lot of guy friends that that have that in their relationships with men. They've done a lot of work to get there. They were not trained that way. They didn't see their fathers doing that. We don't have a rites of passage, th- you know, thing in our culture here. And that's what you know, things like Mankind Project and your work is. I think really creating that, giving men finally a rites of passage where they can um, step into that role. But the men that I know that have embraced that, they experience more connection more fulfillment, more aliveness. There's just more vibrance there. There's just more, more, more everything as opposed to just this kind of like linear, uh, maybe dull or just limited way of being. So for folks who are like, I don't know why I would, why I would want that. Do you want to feel more alive and more, you know, just more of that vibrance in your being through that the connections that you, for through connection is it's powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you when you think about it as men, typically, like I, I, I had a really hard time building relationships with men because from a young age I was bullied all through school. I was bullied. I was beat up. I was teased. It, it, even though I I played like semi professional sports after high school and all through high school, it it, it still like had a, a huge toll on on my relationship with men. And as a result, I, I gravitated towards relationships with women because they were just easier, they were safer. But I realized at a certain point, most men, the process of looking another man in the eye is generally associated with like stepping to him. It's like, I'm sizing you up and I'm going to fight you. I want to see, and, and like, I remember going to, to bars and clubs when I was in high school and I would make eye contact with someone, with a guy. They'd be like, what? What are you looking at? What are you looking at, motherfucker? You want to fight? It's like I'm. I was. I, I'm looking in your eye. Mm-hmm. It's making eye contact. It's being polite. But like <laughs> that's 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 the that's the the num- literally the number of times I went to a bar and I made eye contact with a man that that thought I was trying to fight him that then tried to fight me. Like countless, countless times just from eye contact. And, and that's the thing is you don't have to cuddle with other men, but actually just give yourself permission to look another man in the eye and, and, and literally remove the mask of masculinity. Allow yourself to remove the armor. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in a, a men's circle before all of the, the quarantine. We were sitting in a, like a sauna and just sharing. And, um, you know, one of the, the men was saying that, you know, we get to re- remove our armor. And I was saying, you know, ultimately we're, we're removing our armor, but we're also just allowing ourselves to polish our armor so that we can become greater reflections for one another of what's possible. 
like by doing this work, by allowing yourself, if, if one of your listeners is listening and, and they're like, I actually, I'm, I'm curious about that. Like, I would love to be able to just like sit with my guy friends and, and share. Like it's, it is, it, it is a fucking challenging time on the planet right now for everybody. And for men, especially, there is so much scarcity program. There is so much fear. There is so much around protecting their family, providing for their family that is completely out of their control. And you don't need to share all of that with your partner. And I'm not saying withhold information. I'm just saying like that might be a lot for them to to also hold, but you get to share that with somebody. You get to share that with your brothers. You get to share that with your mentors, with your friends. And if there are men that are listening that are like, oh yeah, like shit's really hard right now. And I wish I had someone to talk to, like reach out to other men and just share it. Because if you think that they will make fun of you for that, or they won't meet you for that, you get to be a permission slip for them. You get to be a permission slip to everybody else because this is how we reprogram. This is how we heal the planet because everybody right now, uh, let me rephrase. I don't want to say everybody. Many people right now are in a perpetual state of fear, fear of expressing themselves, fear of stepping into their most authentic self, fear of expressing their pleasure. And when we release the fear and say, okay, well, if I call out my friend and I say, hey, I'm having a hard time and they make fun of me for that, great. I don't need to be friends with them. I don't want to be friends with someone who makes fun of me for saying that I'm having a challenging time in the world right now. I want to be friends with people who can actually hold that and say, you know what? Yeah, it's challenging. I don't have a solution for you. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm having a challenging time too. But just know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And you get to be a permission slip. Put out more love, everyone. I love, I, I absolutely love that. It is such a cultural thing too, right? It's a very American, a lot of times that I don't want to generalize the whole like, if, when you go to India or some other countries, men are holding hands when you go out and they're like leaning on each other. And so we're not trying to generalize and say that all men are a specific way, by the way, out there, folks. We're just saying, let's put out more love in the world and encourage everyone to tap in and, and check out the masculine pillar, which will you please tell our listeners out there how they can find you and work with you and also, I know your website's themasculinepillar.com, but any other social media handles that you have? Of course. Thank you. Um, so themasculinepillar.com is my men's program um, where I currently am I'm taking applications for any of your listeners. If they use Shameless Sex as an affiliate code, I will give them an additional discount off of the, off of the tuition. Um, so themasculinepillar.com. My personal website is Matthew Aris dot com on there you can see my bio you can see about me i actually have a background as a hollywood producer produced music videos for jay-z and beyonce and katie perry so you can see my whole past life um as well as there's there's ways of getting in touch with me for one-on-one work uh, on instagram i am the healing mat the healing mat and on facebook is just my name spelled out matthew Aris. Oh, beautiful. And that's A-Y-R-I-S-S, everyone. Thank you, Matthew, for sharing your incredible work that you're doing with our listeners and with Amy and I today. Or would it be me and Amy? I don't know right now. I can't. I have to study my grammar. Chip and dip. Uh, Chip and dip. with chip and dip right now. (laughs) So we absolutely love all of our listeners out there. And remember, if you're like doing what Amy and I are doing. And also Matthew, you're on quarantine, you're in lockdown and you're still maybe indulging in some wine from time to time. Check out marginswine.com. Amazing small batch boutique wine and comes out of Santa Cruz, California. They deliver. And if they still have wine, you can actually get a discount uh, by using code shamelesssex on marginswine.com. Check out if you buy six bottles, uh, you get 10% off. And then a case, you get 20% off or 15%. Three bottles, you get 10, six bottles, 15. It's on our website. Check it out. Okay. (laughs) You save money. So we love you all. Remember, if you have time and you're listening to this podcast, go ahead, rate us on iTunes. We love reading your reviews. We love five stars and We absolutely just from the bottom of our hearts want to thank you for being part of the shameless sex revolution. You mean the world to us, everybody. We will see you next Tuesday and probably next Friday and hopefully every day. Join us on Instagram Live. We do Instagram Lives now 12 Pacific time. Amy and I will answer your sex questions. I think that's it. On Fridays. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. (laughs) Forgot about the day. (laughs) It's all blending together. (laughs) All right, y'all. We will uh, talk to you later. Ciao for now. Thank you.
Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.